Hey up everyone, how's it going? With the launch of the recent NVIDIA Ampere 3000 series, a lot of people are going to be upgrading their power supplies. So I thought I'd make a video on how to actually upgrade it and swap it out. And I didn't mention it in my previous how to build a PC video. So I thought I'd do it in this video. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. This is the power supply I'm using for my test bench. It's a Corsair CV650. It's 80 plus bronze, so it's it's pretty efficient. It's not the most efficient. It's not the best 650 watt power supply, but it shall do the job just fine. I don't need anything special. Now well, this is certainly a lot better than what I've got in there. It's a Corsair VS450, one of the worst power supplies that Corsair has ever made. Nothing on Corsair, they make great power supplies, but Every company makes a bad product here and there, and the VS450 is definitely one of them. It definitely can't handle high power graphics cards, which I want to test. So this will pretty much handle anything apart from the really high end graphics cards like the 3090s and some really old power hungry cards. But for now, this will do me just fine. Okay, right. The PC is completely unplugged from anything. That's the first thing you want to do while swapping out a power supply. And then what you want to do after that is remove all the power cables so you've got your PCIe for your graphics card you've got your 24 pin for your motherboard power you've got your EPS power up there for your CPU and you've got power to drives which is SATA power there if it can focus there we go that's your SATA power there that is usually what's plugged into a power supply there may be other accessories Right, now we've unplugged the power supply from pretty much everything, now we need to reroute the cables towards the back of the case. We make sure that when we take the power supply out, nothing gets caught, therefore we might break something if something gets caught. So we're doing this just so we don't break anything essentially. Right now all power cables are away from the front of the case and now we can actually take the power supply out and I'll show you how to do that now. All it is, is four screws on the back. The way this case works is we take this little plate out and that comes out with the power supply so I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so out with the old and in with the new. It's actually smaller than the other one, I've actually come to notice. And it's a high wattage as well, and the cables look way better. Now ketchup and mustard in this one. I wasn't expecting that, because on the actual product picture, they had ketchup and mustard on there, which uh, it's not the best marketing, but oh well. Okay, to put the power supply into the new bracket, bear in mind this isn't the same for every single case, it differs by your case. This is an NZXT S340, this case is, and NZXT tend to do this with their power supplies. But what you've got to do is you've got to match up the holes with the actual mounting points on the bracket. As you can see, I've got it slightly off, which I need to uh, actually change. As this is a non-modular power supply, meaning all the cables are actually fixed into the power supply, we don't need to worry about what cables we need to connect up to our system. I can make a video on how to do a modular power supply or a semi-modular power supply because the one in my main system is a semi-modular. So if you want that video, just uh, let me know down in, the, down in the comments. As we now have the bracket on, as so, we can put the power supply into the system. What we're going to do is we're going to do it face down as we've got 
breathing for our power supply down there and we've got sufficient height enough for the power supply to be able to breathe but to be honest I don't think this will be getting too hot anyway okay so if we put it in fan down with the cables facing outwards like so there we go it's installed we just need to screw it down right now the power supply is installed we've got to find out what cables we actually need for our system okay so right this is the CPU connector this goes up to the top through there we only need four of these as this is an eight pin but you can split it off into two fours which is exactly what we need this is arguably the most important one this is the 24 pin this provides power to our motherboard and i will plug this in now well feed it through at least so if we just feed it through there it is the hardest one to cable manage as well is it so bulky this is our supplemental PCIe power. We need two six pins. This is our GTX 970, our EVGA model specifically needs two six pins. some SATA power cables this can go to SATA drive so that's SATA SSD SATA hard drives and this also can go to accessories like my fan hub here and stuff like Corsair Commander Pro stuff like that usually RGB controllers as well and fan controllers <laughs> Right, everything's now connected. The system will work fully now. Only problem is cable management. If you don't care about it, that's fine. You should care about it, really. So I'm going to make it so just the side panel connects on. I don't really care about what it looks like behind. As long as it looks okay in front, I'm not too bothered. Okay, that is a power supply change and it's looking a lot better with the black cables now. And one thing actually before you uh, go to turn it on, turn the power supply onto the I. The O means off and the, the line means I'm guessing the circuit's connected. But yeah, that's it, the PC is done. I will show it actually loading up. Has it, I did see your message, mate. I'll show that it actually starts up this time. But yeah, that's how you build a PC. And uh, if you like the video, like it. If you liked it even more, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.